Thank you. God has smiled on me. The significance of a smile, isn't that something? You know, if you just stop and think, as Brother Balkan was ministering to us, I thought about a smile. And when a person smiles, or when you get a smile, it gives you some comfort. It gives you some relief. Is that right? Hmm? So, uh, God has smiled on me. That's great. That's powerful. And if anyone smile on me, I want to be God. How about you? Amen. How about you? Uh, so because we know that his smile 
is a, now, you know, there's some fake smiles too. You know, there's some, smile does send a signal, okay? Smile send a signal. Uh, so if we uh, want a signal to come to us, we definitely want God to smile on us this morning. Amen? Amen. Well, we are in this lesson. Uh, when I looked at it, uh, glimpsed it, you know, well, what is the writer trying to say? Then I started doing some research. I, I usually try to research the title a little bit to try to get an understanding. See where the writer is trying to carry us at. Waging love, waging love. And, 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 and you know, we look at uh, wage and, you know, as, as money, as money, right? You know, but the writer puts it wage and love. And, and then I, I went on and I said, well, let, let me look at wage in here. It's a carry on a war or campaign. So there's some key words there. There's some key words there. Carry, then war. Now we look at war as negative sometimes, don't we? Or a campaign. So wage and love. Well, you know, how, what is Isaiah trying to tell us this day about uh, wage and love? Now, remember, remember I shared with you at the beginning of the quarter that the, 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 uh, the overview said that we want to look at Isaiah this quarter, right? We want to look at him, his writing the time, the predicament was going on, but most of all, let's look at God. Most of all, let's look at God. You know, uh, it was wonderful the day he said, the day King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, right? <laughs> that was powerful. That was very powerful. But the key point that the writer say, hey, look at that. Give God the praise for that. That Isaiah said, hey, when King Ozai died, I saw the Lord, but the writer said, we need to look at God. We need to look at God this morning. Not self, not the preacher, you know, not the politician, not the president or the, the president of our conference. We, not your neighbor, but we need to look at God. When we look at God, then we will, we, we will see how he smiles on us, right? We will see how he smiles on us. We will see how he permit things to come to our life. Well, we're talking about wage and love. And I thought the, the, the introduction was very powerful. This family who lived around this clansman, this clansman. And they say, you know, how do we change this thing here? How do we, we, break this hatred that's going on there. And it says that uh, the couple kept visiting him and the friendship grew. He even thought of becoming a Jewish. And that's deep, that's deep, right? But they kept doing what? Waging love. That's what they kept doing. They kept waging. So they say, you know what? In order to to change this thing around, I, we got to put on a campaign. We got to go at war with this thing. You see, it's nothing wrong with war when you're going at it the right way. You know, that there, there's a there's a lot of things that that we you know uh, wage war on. We wage war on. So it said, let's learn more about this important spiritual principle as depicted by the prophet Isaiah. What is this? Is it not this the fast that I chose to loose the bond of injustice, to undo the thong of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? This thing and more and more we see how God is doing this from a collective and a personal, right? You know, last week we, we were into this thing about, in, in a few weeks ago, we were in this thing about a uh, 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 servant nation and, you know, uh, this servant concept. 
So now, today, the question we need to ask ourselves, how do I, well, let me change that. The question I need to ask myself, how do I put on a war or campaign about love? Hmm? So let's get into the lesson. Any comments this morning as we get into this wage and love? Because the lesson really is going to give us some, some, some verses that are going to shock us. It's going to ask us to do something uh, which really kind of, I won't use crazy, but it's kind of strange. They're going to ask us to do something, right? God said, I want you to do something, and it kind of shocks you. I mean, you know. So any comment, any comment? No takers, no takers. All right. Okay, let's get over here. Buying something free. Well, there it is, Karen. Up front, right in your face. How in the world are you going to buy? I mean, why should I buy something free? <laughs> huh? Let's unpack this this morning. This, 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 this buying something free. Let's go to Isaiah 55, verses 1 through 7. Someone read that for us, please. Isaiah 5, 55, 1 through 7. Buying okay. something free. <clears throat> 1 through 7. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm reading out to this morning out of the contemporary English version. Okay. okay. <clears throat> if, if you are thirsty, come and drink water. If you don't have any money, come eat what you want. Drink wine and milk without paying a cent. Why waste your money on what really isn't food? Why work hard for something that doesn't satisfy? Listen carefully to me and you will enjoy the very best foods. Pay close attention. Come to me and live. I will promise you the eternal love and loyalty that I promised David. I made him the leader and ruler of the nations. He was my witness to them. You will call out to nations and you have never, I'm sorry, you will call out to nations you have never known and they have never known you, but they will come running because I am the Lord, the holy God of Israel. And I have honored you. Verse six, turn to the Lord. He he can still be, while he can still be found, call out to him. He is near. Give up your crooked ways and your evil thoughts. Return to the Lord, our God, and he will be merciful and forgive your sins. The question I have to do, is there a contradiction there? What is the contradiction? I mean, one point you say do this, the other point you say do that. I mean, what do you want me to do, God? <laughs> huh? He's showing the provision. Oh, go ahead, um, Brother Pringle. The point is, come buy something. You don't, but what? there's no money involved. So, okay, I'm going to the store. I can't leave my wallet on the dresser. I got to bring my money with me if I want to get something out the store. Well, what they're saying in Isaiah is, you come on to the store, you don't need no money. Okay. Hold it now. What kind of store is that? There it is. Anyone else? I just want to show, say that it points us to um, the redemption that um, Jesus already paid it all. You know, it, it, everything is a story of redemption, or we should see it as that in salvation. That we can't we can't pay for salvation. We can't we can't do any enough works. We can't. There's nothing to exchange. It's, it's a free gift for us to receive. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Anyone else? The first thing we do when we somebody want to give us something, we always want to say, what do I owe you? And in this situation, uh, we don't owe anything because it's a gift. We're just inviting you to come and we want to give it to you freely. But if you're afraid to receive that gift, you won't come. But if you want to find out more of what I'm talking about, you'll come in and um, receive what is offered to you and be glad 
you won't look at it from the perspective of what do I need to do or what is being offered to me and, and um, how can I receive it um, graciously. That's just my thought. Hey, anyone else out there? Hmm? That's a good point. What Sister Pringle said, I just want to reiterate um, because, you know, how often do we hear ourselves saying someone want to bless us and we're like, well, what do I owe you? Let me give you something for that. And 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 then and we translate that into our with our relationship with the Savior. You know, what can I do to earn this or what can I do to receive this? But it is it, it's free. He's already paid the price. It's been a price paid. I think let's point that out now. It wasn't free for Jesus paid the price. So it's free to us, but it wasn't free to him. And I think that's the point of coming by that, you know, money, not money, something has been exchanged. Blood has been exchanged and it's his blood for us. All right. Anyone else? There's something that we have to do, right? Just come, right? We, we you know, just come. All right. Let someone read that, that paragraph, those two paragraphs up on the Monday there, Sunday, Sunday. I thought it was very powerful that to help us see it a little bit different. Suppose you took, okay, someone read that. Sorry, I was trying to unmute myself. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, um, suppose you took food and stood on the street in a big city and announced to the hungry or homeless there. Um, you who have no money, come and buy and eat. But how can they buy if they have no money? So if you stand on the street corner <laughs> and with the homeless or the hungry and tell them to come, come and buy <laughs> and eat, you know, or whatever, they're gonna look at you like, you know what? You, you know I don't have money. So how are you gonna have me to come and buy? You know, why you want me to come and buy something when you know I don't have it? So <laughs> that's that is like. What you know, that would be kind of confusing to you know. So, I when I read that when I was on the lesson, it's like <laughs> that is kind of confusing to if you was to say that, but you know, like Tracy and um Sister Pringle was saying, you know, that you know it, it, it was already bought for us, so it, it's free, so it's, it's how you word how you word it, you know. I took it. Elder Bright, you're muted. It said the next paragraph say, however, if you add the words as Isaiah did, come and buy, then it say without money and without price, it's free. You know, the point becomes clear. Isaiah appealed to people to accept forgiveness freely. Yet the word by emphasize that what God offers people to meet their needs and desires is valuable. So receiving it requires a transaction, transfer of something of worth. God free, freely offers forgiveness within the framework of a restored covenant relationship with his people. But not because it was free for him, he bought it at the terrible blood-drenched price of his own service. Though free, it came at a astonishing cost to himself. God says, paid for, I've, I've given up something valuable here. Just come and get, now we, we're gonna find out. So so, so, so when, when we do it, when we become, well, I'm gonna get ahead of myself. I'm not gonna go over there right now. Let's unpack. First Pete 1 18 19. It said, What was the price for our salvation? What what did what was paid for our salvation? First Pete, first Peter 1 18 and 19. Someone read that for us, please, and give me your comment. May I say something before we read that, Elder Brian? Um, just in the in what you just read, the highlight, it, you know, it, it says golly, God freely offers forgiveness. You know, and that's within, certainly within the framework. And and I don't want us to, you know, just kind of glaze over that because a lot of times we get stuck in the fact that um, we, we we struggle with forgiving ourselves and also believing that God will forgive us. And many, many times that creates a stagnant 
space in our spiritual walk and in you know in in our in our um the I, excuse me, our spiritual development as well. So I just, I didn't want us to just kind of move past that too quick because a lot of, of us as Christians, as professed Christians struggle with a lack of forgiveness of ourselves and certainly of others, unfortunately. Isn't that something? Powerful statement. We yeah. struggle with forgiveness for ourselves and we definitely struggle with forgiveness of others. Right. Amen. It Amen. It don't have, and and sometimes the forgiveness of others don't have nothing to do with us, <laughs> huh? And and the reason why we do it is because, well, I think the reason why I do it, put it that way, is because I have not got a full understanding of forgiveness. I have not got a full Amen. understanding of forgiveness. Yes. Right? You know, God forgive me. <laughs> hey, you know, we hold. Lord have mercy. If God, let's go back. The writer said, look at God. Let's look at Israel. Let's look at these people during this time. Remember, they was on the bank in the river, on the bank in the river. And God said, listen here, Isaiah, tell them I've already done this thing for him. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the same God that told Isaiah to tell Ahaz, I got it. <laughs> This is the same God that told Ahaz, Isaiah tell Ahaz, I got it. Isaiah tell Ahaz, if he don't believe I got it, ask him to show, ask him to tell me to show him a sign that I got. Right. Huh? Look at all the things that God is doing here. Hmm? There's nowhere it says that God turned his back on the people. Hmm? They kept drifting. And neither on us. And we have to be careful to, we have to receive that. We got to own that, that he does. He look at all, like you said, with that's a perfect example. He not just tell Ahaz this and, and, and Ahaz should have just believed it at, at that. But then ask, tell him to show, ask me for a sign. And I'll even show him that it's all for Ahaz's benefit. This is not for God's benefit, but uh -huh. it just shows the links that he goes to 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 bless us and to to save us to deliver us and I, if we just receive that oh my gosh what i mean how, that that in and of itself ushers me into a more intimate relationship with the lord i want to love him look at much he loves me i want to be in a relationship with him and, and we have to like karen was saying about the wording we have to we have to share jesus like that like, you know, not that, you know, with the hell and damnation, you're going to hell if you don't stop doing this. And we, we, we know the result. We know what the word says. But what about how much God loves you? And he's just, he, he loves you so much. He puts you on my heart for two or three days. And I've been praying for you. He just wants you to know he loves you. And he wants to, to redeem you to himself. And he's going to help you through that. I mean, what if we, we presented God like he truly is? He is love. I, he, I can't yeah. love somebody even an England as much as he loves me. And if we presented him like that, man, we couldn't, we, we, when the churches or the yards or the zoom meetings would be full, but I want to know more about this Jesus. Yeah. One of the things that, um, that, that about God's love is, um, you know, like you said, the unforget the forgiveness of, of, of his love. Uh, and we we struggle with in in the sense that, well, how could I forgive you if you hurt me? And every time I think about that pain, I think about forgive you. No, I ain't gonna forgive you. But how much pain did was paid for our sin that we hurt God, but at the same time, it's not held against us. You know, if that ain't mercy, then what is? If that ain't grace, what is? But even, even this morning, I had this thought, because I studied my lesson and everything, I had this thought that I was out in my yard this morning, just walking around, I was thinking about, you go through life and you get hurt. And when do you let that hurt go? 
you know, and I, and what came to my mind was a divorce. You know, here it is you in love with someone, and that person breaks your heart, breaks up the marriage, you know, and drag you through the mud. And you move on with your life, but you hold on to that hurt. And you say, well, I could forgive other people. I ain't forgive that joker. No, not that joker. Anybody but that joker. But when you look in the mirror, you are that joker. So, you know, we go through those things and, and we walk the walk, but believe me, it becomes a real challenge to own what we need to do. We, we, we cannot buy the love God gives us, but we need to learn how to let go of that pain. That's all I have to say. Good morning, everyone. This is Cindy Williams. I would like to say something also. Okay. Good I am the love that God has for me and for you. It really stands out in my mind whenever he say he loves us deeper than death. Now, each one of us, we've been through, we've been through that. Mm. And that's a, you have to think about how deep death, how it makes you feel whenever that, you know, when we was going through that and still going through it. Now that's a deep, you got to think about that deep love, that very, very deep. <laughs> and I said, Lord, I just, I don't understand it. I can't understand how deep your love are. But I know, Lord, I know one thing. When somebody died, your loved one, wow, that's very painful. That's deep. It's so deep. And think about that love, y'all. Think about that love, what you're going through. When you feel when somebody, when you, when somebody leave you. That's a deep love. I don't understand it, but I know it's deep. So God bless y'all, and I hope y'all have a blessed Sabbath. We all will. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? Let's look at the price for our salvation. First Peter 1, 18, 19. Someone read that for us, please. First Peter 1. 18, 19. I don't know if you're going to hear echo. Are you hearing the echo? Yes. Okay, I won't read that. Okay. Someone else, please. First Peter uh, 1, 18 and 19. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but from the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Let's unpack that a little bit there. We, we, we're trying to find out what was the price of our salvation? What is the Bible saying there? What is the word of God saying? You, we were not redeemed with uh, things that are corrupt. We were redeemed by the blood of Christ. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. That's a sacrifice, isn't it? Now we look at money as a sacrifice, but that's a sacrifice there. All right. Huh? All right. Any other comment? Let's go to Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. I hear, was somebody else going to read? I heard some pages flipping. Okay, oh. I got it. And again, I'm reading out of the um, contemporary English version this morning. So eight verses eight and nine, you were saved by faith in God who treats us much better than we deserve. This is God's gift to you and not anything you have done on your own. It isn't something you have earned. So there is nothing you can brag about. 
Amen. Mm. Mm. I believe that says it all, doesn't it? I'm telling you, I love that. <laughs> you know. Not that we are, so we can't brag about brag about it at all. Mm. Nothing. Nothing. Just come and buy. Just come and accept this, right? Hmm? Okay, all right. It says that high thoughts and ways. Let's look at this thing here this morning. Right, let's, let's start in Isaiah 55, 6 to 13 and, 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 and get some under of why God is thinking this way because it kind of throws us off our rocker on this coming by, right? And then the writer said, well, let me help you understand a little bit maybe why God is thinking this way. So let's go to Isaiah 55, verses 6 to 13. All right? This is my reader. Okay. It says in Isaiah 55, verse 6 to 13. <clears throat> Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not hither, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall the words, so shall the word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the things whereto I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorns shall come up the fern tree, and it's, instead of the briar, shall come down the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for the name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. All right, all right. Let's 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 kind of dwell on Isaiah fifty-five eight through nine. And the writer asked the question, what do you think that means? Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. And what did it say? For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, say the Lord. For as the heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Let's, let's, what, what is God saying there? What is the writer saying? We're like we're like babies, babies and parents. We can't understand it. Babies can't understand why their parents do certain things or tell them not to do things. They just can't. We can't comprehend uh, why God does things the way He does. We don't have our, our mind is not even uh, equipped to, to deal with that. Anyone else? Yes, Sister Pringle. Oh, I thought you would raise your hand. Anyone else? Yeah, I think yes, I, along with what John is saying. I mean, for me, it helps me to understand grace also that we can't wrap our minds around grace and how, how God bestows grace upon us. It helps 
Um, also that we can't, like John is saying, we can't fathom why God does what he does or how he thinks and how he, he processes. We, 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 we can get some understanding from the word of God, but we cannot grasp in, in, in its entirety or even near, near its entirety why, you know, how God thinks in the mind of God. Sister Griffin? <laughs> Sister Griffin? You're on mute. Were you going to say something? Yes. I, I, if I read the, uh, um, look at the note down there of all the greatest mysteries of the universe, no doubt the greatest one of all is the plan of salvation. A mystery we can only barely begin to understand. Mm -hmm. That the creator of the universe was stooped to close himself in humanity live a life of toil and suffering, only then to die in our, in our behalf, a, a sacrifice for sin, all in order that he could pardon us and show mercy to us in a truth that will thrill the hearts of God, created being for all the ages of eternity. All right. All right. Very, very uh, uh, important to each one of us this morning that he would come to this old sinful world and die for our sins. All right. Anyone else? Anyone else? I want to speak, but I think my mic is really messed up. But I just want to concur with everyone, what everyone said, and that we can't comprehend because we just like um the brother said we don't we we haven't even been given the ability to understand that we're to just go by faith that what he said is and um believe and trust in that i don't think that we can even imagine even for us as humans to die for somebody and then um you know, rise again and then uh, give our, you know, just love people the way that Christ loves us. I'm, All right. just, I'm in agreement, that's it. All right, anyone else? Anyone else? It, 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 to me, it picks, it sends a, you know, God said, tell them to come by. You know, now, wait a minute. As, as Karen said, it, that, that kind of, your mind is gone. Your mind is gone. Wait a minute, now you asked me to do something, but then you say, if I don't have no money, but you asked me to buy, buy me, and I got to have something to get it there. And then God said, listen here. I don't think like you think. <laughs> I, you know, just come and buy. Don't, you know, I, I, my thoughts are not your thoughts. God say, it's this, the way I do things, just, you know, just have faith and step out and do it. And, and, and we have to admit, we have to admit that we struggle with these mysteries. We struggle with these promises that God said do. We, you know, I mean, we, you know, even come down, let's, stewardship. You, you, you know, we, God said, hey, I hope you the windows of heaven. And we're looking at a few windows in our houses, right? <laughs> God's opening windows of heaven. I don't know how many, if it's just one, fine, just open it, give it to me, right? <laughs> but God said, I don't, just, just relax your mind. Don't even try to get down into what we like to say, the weeds of why I did this and I'm doing that, just come, just come. Because he's going to ask us to do something else here now when we get on this fast thing that, you know, we like to talk about sometimes. But I want to jump down to, wait a minute, before I jump down, somebody may have say something. Yeah, I was I about to say, may I, <laughs> may I jump ahead. in here? So, I mean, you know, because I think you're probably going beyond 55, 6 through 9. And in that, I just wanted to point out where it asks, you know, what is the context in which the Lord talks about um, how his ways and thoughts are higher than um, what we can imagine. And, you know, when we look at this, this is a plan of 
of redemption is 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 repentance. And again, going back to the forgiveness part, we get stuck because we don't believe that he'll do it. We don't believe sometimes, you know, when we, because I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, I've gone too far or I've done too much, you know, and and that sort of thing that we haven't, we're not unreachable by God. We're not out of his reach. And the whole, it's the whole plan of redemption. He died that we might be redeemed um, unto the Lord. So just bearing that in mind that that's the whole plan. That's the whole process. All right, all right, okay. Don't see the hand, don't see the mic. Let's go down to the bottom. Look at the bad things you've done. The people whom you have hurt, the unkind words you have spoken, the way in which you have disappointed others, not to mention yourself, and yet, through Jesus, you can be forgiven for all these things and stand right now perfect and righteous in the sight of God. If that isn't a mystery, what is? Wow. Test more time. Look at the thing. Since you didn't quite hear me, since my Sister may be breaking in and out. Let me read it again to you. Look at, so let me make it personal. Joe Bryan, look at the bad things you have done. The people you have hurt, knowingly and unknowingly. I want to add that, okay? The unkind words you have spoken the ways in which you have disappointed others, not to mention yourself, Joe, and yet through Jesus, you can be forgiven for all these things and stand right now perfect and righteous in the sight of God. You see, for me to look at them, because the writers say, I know what you're thinking. God said, I know what you're thinking, Joe Bright, but I don't think like you. I don't think like you. Let's talk about this down here. This thing. That's powerful, y'all. We, you know, we like to ask too many questions. We say, well, well why don't you think like me, God? Okay. And we just get this cycle in our mind and we just keep going and we keep going instead of just stepping out and doing what he asks us to do, we, we, we ask too many questions about things God asked us to do. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? You know, I, <clears throat> when I read that, um, boy, you know, I think about times when I, because I, lo I, I love a good debate. Um, <clears throat> so times I built my argument and I, you know, I'm, I think I've got my information and I think I'm right. I mean, I'm right. I'm, I know it. And then I realized that I was just as wrong as I thought I was right. You just kind of be like, oh man, you got me. You're right. I just I felt like that when I read that. Like, how could I ever? I mean, it makes you stay out of judgment for sure. And it's like, gosh, that's right. I, you know, because boy, I remember even if I didn't say a thing, I might have thought a thing that was, you know, just deathly wrong and sinful in all aspects of it. You know, um, and, and and when we think about that, if we really let every word that's in that little paragraph resonate with us, my God, if he can do it for me, if, if, if he can use me, knowing all of this about me, he can use absolutely anybody. So, I, you know, it, it is humbling to read that is absolutely humbling. So uh, this morning, I got to get off this little bandwagon, picking and choosing for God. I got to get off this bandwagon judging for God. I don't care. It's, a, it's, it's there in the book. Read it. It said that look at self. Now, there's something that God also says. I want you to turn to Hebrews 4.16. Someone read that. Hold on to your seats now because it's going to tell you to do something. In Hebrew 4.16, what does the Bible say? 
Please pause. Okay. okay. <clears throat> um, let us therefore approach the, the um, now I'm in a new revised standard version. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Mm. Mm. What is boldness? Let's, let's unpack that word a little bit there. Huh? What is boldness? I know. Go ahead and Google it. Give him definition of boldness. <laughs> With, without, without fear. Without fear. Without fear. Absolute yeah. transparent. I mean, just I'm, here it is. You there know, kind is. of thing. Yeah. With assurance, confidence, Come on. boldness. Come on. Just walk right on up there. Don't worry about what you're saying. Don't worry about what the people are saying looking at me. They're just like me. That, that, like that, me. that, we got to freeze the frame on what you just said. That in and of itself, don't worry about what the people are saying. They're just like me. Somebody said, I think Brother Pringle said earlier, when we, we talked about I can't forgive that joker. I felt that Brother Pringle, he, he said, you, we are the joker. And I mean, you think, I mean, look at that. Oh my God, don't for, don't worry about the people. They just like me. And and, and flipping that for all, 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 all y'all super Christians out there, when we see a person, we got to say, you know what? I ain't going to judge that person because I'm just like them or I was just like them except for the great of God or in my mind some days I still am just like them um, and mm -hmm. if it had not been for the grace of God oh we you know kind of thing it just it when you just flip that around um boy I, again it just it was humbling for me and still is as we're unpacking it right now I can't complain because see when God give me that peace that passive understanding that peace that I can walk boldly before him right hmm? Now, I don't, I, I'm not able to do that until he's given that peace because as long as I'm in the river on the bank, you know, as long as I'm punishing myself, I can't get out of that hole. Where if I'm punishing myself, I'm definitely going to punish you, <laughs> right? But when I can get out of that hole to quit punishing myself, I can walk boldly. I can, I can receive this thing. And I can receive it daily because every day that you get up, Satan is going to tell you you're no good. But I can know I can walk boldly today because he has forgiven me. You know, he don't think like I think. He have he has forgiven me. He said, I want today I want you to come and buy. Today I don't work. I know you don't have no money, this come on. Hmm? Isn't that, you know, I can say it kind of contradict itself, but no, you just come on. This this is all this is already free for you. My son, you know, the greatest sacrifice ever given, my servant gave his blood for you. You come on. Any comment? Any comment? Let's talk about this fast. Fast. Oh boy. This fast here. <laughs> uh, let's start in, in Isaiah 58, 3. We're going to jump out of Isaiah 55 in Isaiah 58, 3. What does the Bible say? Hmm? 50, Isaiah 58, 3. Mm -hmm. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice. In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exploit all your laborers. Wow, now let's unpack this fast thing. There's a question in that, that. Who, 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 who's doing this, this talking here, huh? Read that once again, John. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Hold it right there. That's a, that got, hey, wait a minute now. You saying, wait a minute. Well, I'm saying, so, so we did. You know why have we done all this fasting and you have not seen us, God? Come on. Because you talked about fasting. Is that right? Huh? You talked about fasting. We've done this fasting, but the question we need to ask ourselves, you know, what kind of fasting was going on there? Huh? Let, let this, uh, go ahead and read a little bit more of it, John. Okay, it says, why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure 
and exploit all your laborers. Hmm. So you, you we fasting for for God to do something to us, and at the same time we exploiting others. Hmm. Now let's unpack that that last part. That how do we? <laughs> let's see it. Yeah, we 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 want God to do something for us, but when it comes to others, we don't we don't particularly want uh, see God doing anything for them. Wow. Right, and we don't extend the charity and the the yeah. grace to others that we want God to extend to us. We want Him to be gracious to us, but you and we don't want what we deserve. But we certainly want God to give others what they deserve. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Let's read on a little bit more there. We're gonna stick that to Isaiah fifty-eight. Yeah, if, if go ahead, read. brother Freeman. Go ahead. Yeah. So it says, why? You know, the question, why we fast, that's the question we're asking God. Is, is that what's being said here? We're asking God, why are we fasting? We, we're we fasting because we want something? Are we we going through the, the, ceremony, the ceremonial process of fasting because we want something special or we want to be acknowledged uh, by God differently. So we want to be set aside in a special sense because we doing so. So look, uh, we doing this not for us. We doing this for you. So is, is the question is, we asking if we doing this and, and we're not getting what we expecting, then why are we doing this? That That's how I'm seeing what's being said here. You know, we... We doing this, God. We putting our bodies through this affliction, and, and we we not getting no reward. We are not getting the reward that we want. So why are we fasting? Are you asking like a rhetorical question, Brother Pringle? Yes, yes. Th that's how I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it as a rhetorical question to God, saying, "Well, look, we doing all this and we doing all that. You know, you you know." We doing this because we want something, but we didn't get what we wanted. Because we're gonna get into it here in a sec. I just think a little bit further down, but that that that's that's our purpose of fasting. I think it's lesson gonna tell right. us. Right, and I'm that, saying that is our purpose right. of fasting. That's our purpose, but that's not right. God's purpose. Right. And, there you and, go. and, and yeah. God asked God sitting. So it seems to me God is asking a rhetorical question. Wait a minute, you you you, you know, you say. Why are you fasting? You know, but then God gets down in there because here's the point. It was a form of fasting, but not sincere. It was a pretense. Hmm? It was not genuine. And so now he's beginning to unpack this thing here now because this, this, it wasn't sincere at all. <laughs> right? And they wanted some praise for it. Mm -hmm. They wanted some praise for it. Right? Yes. So let's get on down there and get some more out of this here because uh, God is going to give us the true fast that we need to be doing. Go ahead. Someone, uh, let's go on. Did someone go on down to verse 7? I know we, start, we started with verse 8, didn't we? Verse 3. 58, 3. Let's go on down to read through 7. Uh, 58 7 is what you want. Isaiah 58 7. No, let's start with verse 3 and read down to 7. 3, okay, all right. Did we, uh -uh. Did we do that? Go ahead. Okay. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exploit all your laborers. Indeed, your fast, indeed, you fast for strife and debate and to mm. and to strike with the fist of wickedness you will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high it is a fast that i have chosen and for a day man to afflict his soul is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes Will you call this a, a fast and an acceptable, acceptable day of the Lord? 
is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out when you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh? It's seeing that there's a conversation going on, right? They're asking a question over here and God is answering them and then God is continuing unpacking that as he answered them. You know, you want to do it this way, but then down here, you know, on this day of atonement, you want to be all pity party and as this, you, this and that, but is that really the fast that I want you to be at? Hmm? Let's read this paragraph. It seemed the people were expecting the Lord to congratulate them for their pity. Of course, they had it all backwards. Participating, self-denial on the Day of Atonement was to express their gratitude and loyalty to him on the day the high priest went before God to cleanse the sanctuary and thereby cleanse them from sin for which they had already been forgiven. Their acts should have been done in thankfulness and gratitude to God who saved them in the day of judgment, not in order to get God approval of their pity and devotion. After all, it was the sin of the people that had defiled God's sanctuary. It had been cleansed with blood that was shed before because of what they had done. Now, the writer asks another question. One of the critical lessons that comes from these texts point to the difference between being merely religious and truly being a follower of Christ. How do we see the difference there? How do we as individuals face the same danger as the individual presented here, which is believing that our religious rituals somehow show we are really following the Lord as he asked us to. Let's open that up. Mm, well, <laughs> I, I kind of want to leave it alone because... Uh, be why? easy, Brother Pringle, be easy. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's very sensitive to, to. It's easy to offend someone because you know, um, as we go through our Christian walk, sometimes what Christianity really means is how much you know. Is sometimes it means um, what type of tie you wear, or. or or what type of shirt you wear, what kind of suit you wear, you know, you know. Um, so it can be like, based on the show you could put on rather than really the relationship that you have. So religion and Christianity is like, you know, it's like, watch it now. It gets very sensitive with that line, even to the point where we're talking about the fast. If 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 I'm when I when I when I have a fast and and I, I make the announcement, well, don't say nothing to me. I'm fasting and and I'm I'm in ceremony and you know because I want to be seen and acknowledged as I'm a Christian. Don't you see what I'm doing? But if you really got that relationship. You don't, even though you're doing those things, it don't have to be a show. Anyone else? It's quiet this morning. And uh, right, um, with that thing about when we are fasting, we are fasting and praying. And when we're fasting, we're not fasting 
all the time for ourselves. We are fasting for other people that we are praying for, that they may get a blessing from it as well as, as us. Okay. All right. I want to, I want to get in this down a little bit because Brother Prager say it can be offensive, but word of God cuts as a two-edged sword. Huh? All right. I mean, one of the critical, one of the crucial lessons that comes from these takes points to the difference between being merely religious and truly being a follower of Christ. Being merely religious and truly being a follower of Christ. So now when we look at religion, because religion, somebody Google religion right quick. Somebody Google that. See if my definition right. What does it say? Okay, Ooh, I got it. Um, the, um, okay, religion. The mm -hmm. belief in and worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal God or gods. Um, ideas about relationship between science and religion, that sort of thing. Um, so can I say something? I know you want to unpack that out. I, I was, uh, yeah. Go ahead. So go anyhow, go ahead. <laughs> with, ahead. with religion and Christianity, I mean, so with religion, is a process and a practice, right? We can do that without being changed on the inside. That Christianity, is. we have to be changed on the inside. And that's harder. That's the work. Um, I can perform, uh, you know, and 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 I, you guys have heard me say that, you know, we, we go to a masquerade ball most often when we go to church. We, we suit up and we, you know, we do our thing and, and we show up, but we leave out the same way we came in and and, and, you know, the same, you know, devils I'm dealing with in the street, I'm dealing with in the church because we hadn't been changed and transformed on the inside. I can be a superhero religious person, um, but when we talk about Christianity and being like Christ, then, then I don't have to tell anybody that. I don't ever have to say that because what I do speaks for who I am in the inside. Or the writers say, merely being merely religious and truly being a follower of Christ. That is the powerful phrase that truly being a follower of Christ. Hmm? Because Christ was controversial sometimes. Christ was, uh, 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 you know, he showed mercy. He was a revolutioner. Hmm? He, he, he did many things different, right? You know, and, and, and so, you know, uh, I always kind of sum religion up as the way of doing things. You know, that, you know that, that's a way of doing things, like you, 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 you said a minute ago. So, you know, yeah, brother, you're right. You know, a certain time, you know, uh, let's unpack this a little bit more. You know, just because I got on a white shirt and a white tie for communion, <laughs> huh? You see what I'm saying? You know, but then I can get off. I really can get upset about a white tie and a white shirt for community. And I miss the point of this, 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 uh, I, I can, I can just get all upset about communion, this ritual that we go through. Hmm? And I don't see Christ. I got to see Christ in everything that I do, and I got to do what, just like our church, our uh, uh, vision statement say, exemplify him. Exemplify him daily in my life. But most of all, I got to start it within this Jerusalem that I live in, this in my home. And then when I go out, like you say, you know, we can go to church, you know, the same way we go in, the way we come out. Hmm? because we didn't let Christ abide in us, right? And so that's, this is the fast that he's talking about. When this, this, this change comes, he was asking, well, you talking about this, this fast, you really were doing it just for sure. That's why God was saying, you, you really want, you, you want me to have pity on you on the day of me, oh, no, oh, you know, and you don't even understand the significance of the day of atonement. It was your sin that caused the sanctuary to be stained. 
That's right. Any comment? Any comment? And also, I, yeah, too, actually. But um, so whenever, um, primarily with what Brother Pringle was saying about, you know, we have, you know, being very careful. I think that, in, and I agree with, we do. I'm not saying that we have to be very careful, but I'm saying we do act like that. We proceed in that way, which is the problem. Um, because we're more concerned about offending people um, instead of standing up for Christ and standing up for what's right. Um, it, it's a lonely place sometimes in a, a, a true spiritual walk and, 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 and walking in that space with the Savior. It, it, I, yeah, you find yourself there with anybody, with very few people, um, because it doesn't take long to, to sit in a space and realize that there's no depth there. Um, you know, once the, the camera is turned off, once the, the audience is gone, you know, the conversation is, is, is recycled, is, is stale, it, you know, it don't go any deeper than, you know, what I can re recite from memory type thing. And so being a true follower of Christ is not, it is not as popular as we would like um, to say that it is. And it is, we, it is offensive sometimes to people um, who especially don't want to move out of their space of religiosity. Another comment. Another comment. I agree. And we must be humble and surrender. That's fast. Let's, let, let's see this fight, this fast fight here. You know. Let, let me just add, add one more comment before we move on. You know, because I, I want to be real in, in expressing what we go through. I have been in church and been in a situation where the spirit has come over me or the spirit has come upon me to the point that I want to do something. But then I said, oh no, you better not start acting like that because you might get shown in the door. And so you restrain yourself. You say, hold it, you know, just, just calm down, brother. Calm down, brother. You'll be all right. And you don't express yourself. So I'm saying, am I being Christian or am, am I being religious? Because, you know, certain things that you might want to do or you might want to say, you say, hold it. No, brothers. Calm down. Just hold that, hold that emotion. We call it an emotion. The spirit, you know. Uh, I, I got fire in my bones, and, and and I wanna, I wanna just. But no, calm down, brother. You'll be all right. Calm down, and then you just let it go. Am I the only one that's been in a situation like that? No. Question on the floor. <laughs> no, you're not the only one, Brother Pringle. I see the head shaking. Um, but don't calm down anymore. I think, you know, the difference between me then and now is that I'm not going to calm down. <laughs> you know, it, as the spirit moves and falls and so be it, you know, praise God for it. Because nobody knows the cost of the anointing that God has placed on my life. Um, so I, I, I don't live my life under, you know, the lampshade anymore. You know, my praise is out. It, I, look, I'm out in the closet, if you will. I'm out in the closet praising these days. And, um, and so, yeah, when we do that, we're being religious and certainly not a follower of Christ. Not at all. How are we going to praise him and be scared to show, show up? He gave us these emotions. He gave me, you know, my loud voice and my projectile. He gave that to me. And I'm going to use every bit of it to praise him. Amen. And again, Amen. nobody knows what God has just brought you out of, or just just bless you with. No, nobody knows. So yeah, so we got to be free to do it. And I I, I hear you, um, Brother Pringle, because I, I I myself have been there <laughs> in church, want to shout, and you know, it's been this other Lord where He just there for me, or just free me, but I just I held back. <laughs> I didn't do it, and you know, it's like, oh Lord, <laughs> but yeah, we we yeah, we got to be free. We got to do it. Regardless, don't, don't worry about them other people. <laughs> you know? picture, yeah. 
picture those people, the disciples, let's just unpack this the right way, the followers of Christ who were mumbling and grumbling about the alabaster box. Let's picture, let's look at the scenery. Let's just look at the scenery. They was there. You could call it a church, you could call it whatever you want to call it, but they was there and they was murmuring about the, the alabaster box. They were murmuring about the cost. They were murmuring about this precious thing. It wasn't out of their pocket. It wasn't out of their pocket. So you can see how people begin to to, to, to murmur, and you can see how we can, well, I can see how I can fall in that trap. Let me make it that way. I can see, cause see, we have to start. One of the reasons I think that we we don't see it because we, we love to say we, they, them, and us. And that puts me out of the box. But when I say I, then it become personal here. But let's look at this fast fight. Let's look at this fast that God say what you really should be doing. Let's unpack that. Let's go to Isaiah 58, verses 6 through 12. Amplified Bible. Rather, the conversation is still going on now. The conversation is still going on. Rather, is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of weakness? to undo the band of yoke, to let the oppressed go free and that you break every enslaving yoke. Is it not to divide your bread with the hunger, hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, that you clothe him and that you hide not yourself from the needs of your own flesh and blood, then shall your light break forth like the morning and your healing, your restoration and the power of, your, of the new life shall spring forth speedily. Your righteousness, in other words, your rightness, your justice and your right relationship with God shall go before you and then as it go before you, conducting you to peace and prosperity and the glory of the Lord shall be your real God. Then, but listen, so, so here it talks about what acts are, what are the acts that God consider true acts of self-denial? So, so God said, you talking about this self-denial. You talking about, well, Lord, we, we fast and you didn't even recognize us. And, and we was all, bent, you know. Lo, lo. <laughs> Here you go again. God said, I don't think the way you think. I don't see it the way you see it here. So, so this fast fight. So, so how, what type of fast does God say that we, we really should be putting on? I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not discrediting the 40 day fast and the 10 day fast. I'm not discrediting that, okay? All right? Because those things are really put in place for spiritual growth, right? But it's talking about here this, this other fast that God's talking about. When God says, You talk about self denial? There it is. There it is. Hmm? Any comment? If our uh, faith doesn't reach out to others, that's what I'm hearing. Okay. Um, our fast is not uh, a true fast. Uh, if it's not helping the, those that are not free that to become free, uh, are we really doing a real fast to help a person that is uh, in prison or who needs. And then it says your salvation will come like the dawn and your wounds will quickly heal. Your goodness will lead you forward. These are the things that happens when, you, when you're doing a real fast. That's what I'm understanding here. Okay. Let me read something to you here. 
anyone can be religious. Anyone can go through religious ritual, even the right ritual at the right time with all the right formulas. But that alone is not what the Lord wants. Look at the life of Jesus. However faithful he was to the religious ritual of his time, the gospel writer focused on so much more on his acts of mercy, healing, feeding, and forgiveness to those in need than on his faithfulness to rituals. There it is. Hmm? If we really follow in Christ, mercy, healing, feeding, and forgiveness to those in need than on his faithfulness to rituals. So the Lord seeks a church, we well, are talking about a church, a people who will preach truth to the world. And there are so many truths. <laughs> we get, do, well, let me ask you a question. Do we get caught up on those, 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 those let's unpack this, these truths that we're talking about here. There's just so many of them out there. Hmm? Okay. Okay. Um, uh, brother, uh, um, a couple of weeks ago, it might have been last week, but I believe it was a couple of weeks ago, Elder Ray uh, made a statement and it kind of stayed with me uh, about doing God's work, about mm -hmm in the middle of the night or early in the morning, going out to areas where the uh, the prostitutes are, where the homeless is, where the downtrodden is out and ministering to them, you know. Now to me, that's, that's something you only could get involved in when the spirit is with you. You have to have the spirit with you to, do those things and to want to do those things because first of all it requires sacrifice it requires going out of your normal to do those things now we were talking about fast now if a fast means helping the downtrodden or bringing a blessing to those that are less fortunate let's say you have a uh, a banquet spread before you, and you say, well, okay, we're going to have a season of fast. Nobody's going to eat from this table because we're fasting. And during that period of fast, no one eat a morsel from that table. But after the fast is over, we all pick out, we all enjoy ourselves, we eat everything. That to me is not what God wants. He's not saying keep the food for yourself during the fast, but at the same time during that fast, help someone else, help the less fortunate. Take that food, say, look, pack all that food up, we're gonna go out, and we're gonna serve the downtrodden. We're gonna make sure they have a feast. That's a fast. You denied yourself, you provided for those that God wanted you to provide for. Now you have done something to glorify God. But if you keep all that food, when the fast is over, you say, let's dig in. You ain't did nothing. You understand what I'm saying? I understand. I understand. Can I add something to that? Yes, ma'am. It's it it in all that you said, Mr. Pringle, it, it's good. But the love that's in your heart, let it be real, not the ritual, Amen. not the form, but truly the heart of Christ to go and serve someone, not thinking of yourself to what you're gonna have out of this or what you're gonna gain or how people are going to see you but going because you know that there is a need 
the people will come to you. They will come to you knowing that and really coming to you because they believe that you have something that they want. Okay. All right. Let's let's, let's go to I let's go to very quickly here, Matthew 25, 40 and James 1 27. Matthew 25, 40 and James 1 27. Uh, after I read this, the Lord seeks a church, a people who will preach truth to the world. But what will, be, but what will better attract people to truth as it is in Jesus? Strict adherence to dietary laws or a willingness to help the hungry. Right? Strict rest on the Sabbath or a willingness to spend your own time and energy helping those who are in need. And when we read that, let's go to Matthew 25, 40 and see what promise is there for us. In James 1, 27. Someone read Matthew 25, 40. Okay, I got 25, 40. Okay. And the, and the king will answer them, truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Hmm. Hmm. Part of the day that would be, amen? Amen. We get that announcement, huh? That those who are least, less fortunate than we are, okay? And, and you know what? Many times, this is what the writer said now. The writer said, even if we do these things, and I think Brother Pringer hit it on the right, a, a point in his statement there. We got to make sure we're doing it for the right reason. Even when we do it, we got to make sure that we are not judging and surmising. We are, we got to make sure that you know if this what if if this what I'm going to do. Sister Colleen Clark said on several Sabbath lesson that she would go on the street and give money. Right? We heard her say that. Right? Hmm? I don't know. If, well, she picked a certain street. Uh, however she did it, but she, she said she would go on the street and give money to people who are out there homeless, you know. Hmm? So when I do that, I really can't be standing on the corner sizing people up. <laughs> well, this person coming, I'm not going to give them anything because look like they got a nice coat on. They don't need it. Huh? We don't know what people are going through. So when we set, when we God said, this is the fast I want you to do. This is the fast that you really should be doing. Let's go to James 127. What did James 127 say? And then we're gonna wrap it up. James 127. What does it say? Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this: to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Mm. There's many ways we can visit the widow and the unfortunate during that trouble. There are many ways and we got to look at little simple ways. I got to look at little simple ways to witness and share and sacrifice and give and, 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 and uh, the last point so look at the blessing in Isaiah 58 that God says will come to those who seek to minister to the less fortunate. What do you think the Lord is saying to us here? Are these promise of a supernatural intervention in our lives if we do these things? Or perhaps is he telling us of the natural blessing we receive by giving of ourselves to others as opposed to being selfish, greedy, and self-absorbed. <laughs> huh? Because at any given time, I can be so selfish. I can be so greedy. And I can be self-absorbed in my own little world. I got mine, you get yours. Like someone said the other day, uh, I think one time on the lesson, you know, pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. But if a person don't have no boots on, huh? Hey, don't worry about the straps. Don't worry about the laces, right? They don't even have any boots on. 
And there's work, there's work, there's work out there for us to do. Any comment before we close today? In summary, in Isaiah 55 and 58, the prophet appeals to his people to give up their thoughts and ways and return to God, whose idea for their happiness is so much higher than their own. May God bless us, and I'll turn over to Pastor Davis. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Can everyone hear me? Give me a thumbs up. Just want to make sure we, we got that. Okay, it's good to see everyone. All right, I want to, uh, first, let me just start by saying, Elder Brian, thank you so much, man. Like, Sabbath school was bomb today. Like, like it was a good lesson. Like, I, I, you know, I got kids, so you guys probably don't see me chiming in because I'm back and forth with the kids. But I be listening, Elder Brian. I just want to say thank you, man. You did an excellent job this morning, and 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 I know that um, honestly, I was blessed. I know everybody else was blessed as well. And so, Elder Brian, I just want to say thank you, man, for your leadership. Um, with that being said, I just want to invite everyone to our worship service today. Those of you that are watching by YouTube, Facebook this platform of Zoom. Thank you for tuning in today. I pray that God will bless you. I pray that you will receive the blessing um, that you came seeking for today. At this time, I'm gonna call the church to worship <clears throat> from the 100th division of the Psalms. The Bible said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with sadness. And don't say that, does it? It's a don't serve him with sadness. Serve him with what? Gladness, right? Because God, it truly is good to us. He said, know ye that the Lord is God. It is he that made us. And we are the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with sad giving. No, but with thanksgiving, everybody. Are you thankful today? No, I'm serious. Come on, let's let's be honest. Are you really thankful today to be in God's presence, to be in this platform in spite of whatever we're going through, whatever's happening in our lives? Are you thankful? It's to enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure to all generation. And I don't know about y'all, like when I read the scriptures, I don't know, something just jump up in me, Brother Davis. I don't know what it is. Like, I just get happy and excited when I read the word of God. Like, I don't know about, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if the spirit just fall, the spirit just come down on me, or whatever that will look like, but I'm just thankful to be here today. Are you thankful? In spite of what you're going through, in spite of what you're feeling, in spite of what your week was like, God has brought you to another week. He has brought us to be in this space today to worship him in spirit and in truth. And I'm not trying to do a pet rally with anybody today. It's for me. I'm just grateful, man, just to be able to say, God, I bless your name. God, I'm thankful just to be in your presence today. Because the truth of the matter is, although you may not tell me today, you may not tell me what you're going through or what you've been struggling with or how you feel it, but the truth of the matter is you are happy just to be in this space, just to be here today. And I'm grateful that God have allowed us to come to worship him in spirit and in truth. I call the church to worship today. At this time, Brother Borkin, lead us in a song. Oh, 
closer fall with me. so much brother Borkin for leading us in song uh, church I, I, I want to share with you um, uh, South Atlantic have um, our president have shared with me I want to share with you uh, the church we, 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 we want to reopen and, and I, I cannot lie to you today I want to go back to church come on say amen who want to go back to church just come on let's just be honest right we all want to go back to church but we know this pandemic is out here and uh, the conference wanted to do a soft opening, but we cannot do that right now. So they have postponed that for the, uh, another two months. So we won't be going back to church no time soon. I'm sorry to give you that bad news. I know you want to be back in the church like I want to be back in the church. We all want to be back there, but we want to be safe. Come on, say amen. We all want to be safe. We want to be safe. I want you to be safe. Um, at the same time, but I want to say this to you. Now, I know there's a lot of myths out there about the vaccines that are going around. I can't tell you if you don't want to get the vaccine, you don't have to get it. But I'm going to encourage you, <laughs> if possible, get the vaccine. Come on, say man, right? Protect yourself. Protect yourself, right? Uh, I don't believe that God has put doctors in place. Um, on purpose. I think he did it on purpose. And I truly believe we, we have experts at the top that have been studying this thing and they've been coming down. And I'm just sharing with you, I'm going to. Now, I'm not telling you, you don't have to, but I'm going to, right? I want to encourage you, if possible, get the vaccine. I'm going to say amen, right? Just shake your head, nod your head at me. I don't know. I don't know how you feel about it, but get the vaccine. I think it's it's a safe vaccine. Uh, I'm doing it right. Um, honestly, I just truly believe that, uh, that 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 God is at work in this thing. I know that we are scared. We've been hearing so much about this, but at the same time, I truly believe this is the route that we need to take as a people. Come on, say amen. If you believe me, just give me a nod. Everybody's just looking, just nod at me. Let me know, Pastor, I'm with you, I'm with you, okay. All right, if, you, if you're not with me, I get it. But, 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 but I just want, I want to encourage you, right? I want to encourage you. Yep, your pastor getting the vaccine. I am, I'm doing that. Come on, say <laughs> I see you other party. I'm getting the vaccine, right? I'm letting you know I'm doing it. So I'm encouraging you as well, protect yourself. Don't listen to all the other stuff out there. Listen to the science behind it. And, and you, you, you know, make up in your mind how the Lord will lead you. You go. 
but I'm, I'm telling you, your past is getting the vaccine. I need it, right? I need to protect myself. Amen. Amen. Okay, that's it. That commercial is over with. All right. So look, look, look. I, ju I just want to say to the church, we got a business meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m. I promise you, this meeting will not be long at all. I just need I need your face in the place. Uh, the Ephesus Church, now the Victory Church, Victory. You will be hearing from me next week when we will be meeting. But for the Ephesus Church, I want the Ephesus Church to know that we are meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m. We, we have a business meeting, and I promise you, it will not be long at all. So will you agree to come? I'm going to see your hands. Uh-oh, I don't see everybody's hands, but God bless you. I will see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, I want to see you in the place. I promise you, we will not be long. Just some business we want to bring to the church, and we're going to move right along. I promise you, it won't be two hours, Dr. Ray. We won't be two hours. I promise you that. I promise you that. About 45 minutes. I think we can do it in 45 minutes. So I'm encouraging you to come to business meeting in the morning at 10 a.m. Send a text message to members. Let them know we got a business meeting. We'll be at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. And just share that. Just 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 let that go out. And, and we, we want to come. You should hit, you should get a robo call uh, this evening just reminding you of the business meeting that we got in the morning at 10 a.m. And Ephesus, Victory, thank you so much for your giving. Because if you don't give, we can't operate. Come on, say amen. That's just the truth or uh, uh, of the matter. So I just want to say thank you all for so much. And I'm grateful. And, and Brother Davis, if I ask Brother Davis to unmute his phone, he will tell you. If I ask Sister Harrison to unmute her phone, she will tell you. In the midst of a pandemic, you guys are still giving. That let me know your heart is with God. Your heart is with God. And I just want to say thank you. Because we cannot operate. We cannot move forward as a church. If you're not giving, Brother Davis, go ahead and unmute yourself and just say something to the people for us. Hey, hey, happy Titus. Thank you so much for continuing to support the church. Um, if y'all have any questions on uh, how to give, just contact me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brother Davis. Sister Harrison, will you say something to Victory? Unmute yourself, Sister Harrison, if you can. Sister Harrison, can you, okay, I think she's not with us, okay. But at the same time, Victory, thank you as well for what you're doing. It's a blessing. That's how we operate. Now, I have to say this to everyone. I shared this with prayer meeting. Now, I know y'all see the ball head. I know y'all see it, right? Y'all see the ball head. I had to do it, right? Because I'm sold out for Jesus. Come on, come on and see, man. Right. We have a and I'm trying to be like Elder Brian a little bit with the ball here and, and Brother Davis. But we, we, we get in there. Uh, but at the same time, we have a uh, revival coming up starting the 31st of this month. And that revival is called I'm Sold Out. Anybody sold out for Jesus? I know I am. Right. I'm sold out. Like I can't turn back. I can't go back. I can't go back to nothing I used to do, how I feel, what I think. I'm sold out. I'm content. I believe. I want to go to heaven. Come on, say amen. So listen, what I'm asking the church to do today, I'm asking everyone today, I'm asking you, humbly asking you, I want you to invite a friend. Invite someone. Look, you don't have to invite them. To 1002 Castle Street, a 589 General Highway in Victory. We don't have to do that now. All we have to do is send them a link, send them a text, give them a phone call, and ask them to join us for our meeting. Come on, say amen. Come on, man. That 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 to me is like Lord, man. You that, that just so easy. That's so easy for us to do. So I'm, I'm inviting you. I'm asking you to participate in, our, in, the, in this revival that is coming up for the month of April. 
We will be meeting every Wednesday at 6.30, every Sabbath at 11 a.m. And I promise you, God is going to move. I know he is, but I need your help. I need you to invite a friend. I need you to invite somebody to be a part of what we're doing. Come on, say amen. When we ask the question, how could the gospel go to all the world? Here it is. This is it. This is it. The gospel is going across the world by, by internet, right? Um, you know, we, we seeing that happening. Everything that we've been preaching about, we've been teaching about, God is showing us now. The gospel is it going. Everybody can hear the gospel now. It's no excuse. You don't have to get up, put on your suit, put on your best black suit or your, your blue suit. Come on, talk to me, right? You don't even have to get out of your, you don't have to move out of your bed if you don't want to. Just go ahead and just go ahead and do this. Let me show you. Do that right there. You see what I just did? Nobody got to see you. Nobody got to know about you. Get your popcorn, get your Kool-Aid, whatever you want to do, you can do that. But I want you to share this. I'm sold out. I truly believe God is going to bless us. And with that being said, family, will you help me? spread the gospel help let's let's get the gospel out. invite a friend because i know god is going to bless amen amen with that being said uh that was uh, my announcement for you today it's good to see each of you brother Borkin. we're going to ask that you will come now and give us a song before we pray <laughs> today, but I know there's some unspoken prayer requests, right? Put your hands up. Praise God. Uh, the Lord know all about your situation. I want to encourage you today. The Lord know you. He wired you. He made you. He know all about you. He know your secrets. He know everything, right? So let's have an open heart. Let's give God our very best today as we pray. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you this morning for waking us up and starting us on our way. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for allowing us to come in this space to worship you today in spirit and in truth. Lord, we ask right now, Lord, if there's anything blocking my prayer from coming before your throne, I ask that you remove it out of the way. I ask that you forgive me. 
But God, your people are assembled today by YouTube, by Facebook Live, and this platform is on. They need you right now. And God, I'm praying for your power. I'm praying for your spirit to fall afresh. I ask that you will touch, you will move. God, I ask that whatever your people are needing today, I ask that you will hold their hand. I ask that you will assure them that you will never leave them nor forsake them. Whether they're on the mountaintop, whether they're in the valley, Lord, let them, let them know today, please, that you are with them and you are walking with them. God, I ask as I pray on Wednesday night, I ask that God that you will rewire us, you will reconnect us, you will refuel us, you will remake us, you will recreate us, you will reform us. God, you will reshape us this morning. Someone today, God, they need your strength. They need your joy. They need your hope. They need your peace. They need your guidance. And God, as I read a quote this, this week that said, Lord, happiness will keep you sweet. Trials will keep you strong. Sorrows will keep you human. Failures will keep you humble. Success will keep you growing but only God can keep you going. And God, I truly believe that today. You're the only person that can keep us going. You're the only person that can keep us going. So God, I pray for the sick among us right now. I pray for the Victory Church in a special way. I pray for the Ephesus Church in a special way, God. I pray, God, that you, you can do things that that, 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 that no one can do. And so, Lord, I just ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus right now, that you will touch your people. You will speak to them. Send your spirit. Send ministering angels right now, Lord, to speak. God, we don't know what we are going through. Only you know that. And I know that your people need you today. God, I understand that I'm just on the, the under shepherd, Lord. <laughs> God, I know I have to come to you and, and get fresh bread every day. And I know that, Lord, but your people right now, God, I ask that you would do for them. Do for them right now, Lord, because I know for a fact, God, in this pandemic, your people are going through it. And so, Lord, I just ask that you would give them strength. We thank you for all the testimonies. I've heard it, God, of how you've been keeping it. And I heard even on Wednesday night, Lord, how how you gave Dr. Ray a good report. And I'm just listening to how you're moving. And God, somebody else needs you. Somebody need a good report right now. So God, I just ask that you bless your people in a special way. Forgive us for our sins. In the blessed name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. Amen. Brother Borkin, we're going to ask that you will come on at this time and give us another song, and then we'll go to the word of God. This song encourage everyone today that's out there listening. I come to let you know that God is able to do all things but fail. Listen if you will. I came here today looking for a blessing. I came here with Jesus on my mind. And I won't, I won't be satisfied until it touch this so hard, hard of mine. I want to say that again. We all came here today on Zoom looking for a blessing. You came here with Jesus on your mind and I, I won't I won't be satisfied until you turn this so hard it's all of mine so I want you to stop by here for a little while 
just one touch from you will make my coming here worthwhile. I want you to stop, stop right here for a little while. I want you to touch this so hard of mine. Touch this so hard. Heart of mine. Dear Jesus, how we love you today. And we want you to tell us what you want us to do. Yes. You know what? I don't know about you, but I want to feel, I want to feel, I want to feel. I want to feel your holy presence. I want to feel it. I want to feel it all over me. So I'm asking you to stop. Stop by here for a little while. Yeah. Just one touch from you will make my coming here worthwhile. I want you to stop, stop by here for a little while. I want you to touch the soul of all of mine. Touch the soul of all of mine. Oh, touch the soul of Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Borkin. Um, I want to call your attention this morning to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, um, verses uh, 1 through 4. A very familiar passage of scripture. Um, I know you have read this before, but if you will turn there with me, and I'm going to read from the, the old, good old fashioned King James Version of the Bible. I'm going to say, man, you can follow along with me in your own translation. First Corinthians um, chapter 13, verses 1 through 4. And here's what the word of God says. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I have become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mystery and all knowledge, though I have all faith so that I could remove mountain and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, talk to us, Paul, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profit me nothing. <clears throat> I want to tag a title um, to our text today as we uh, were journeying through the word of God, uh, the missing ingredients, the missing ingredients. Let's pray. Father, we ask that you will speak now in Jesus' name, amen. I remember <clears throat> church um, growing up as a little boy we used to go to my grandmother's house every Thanksgiving for Thanksgiving, right? Every Thanksgiving, we'll go to my grandmother's house. And we would go to the house, and, and if you're a family, like, you know, you, you would go with your family on holidays, and you would gather, you guys would cook, do your turkey, your ham. Oh, I ain't mean to say ham, but whatever, you know, how we had to, listen, I see it like, right? I hope you're not eating ham. Come on, say amen. But, your turkey, at least, is some chicken breast or whatever that may look like. And, and we would go to my grandmother's house and, and we would gather and we would have a, a bake off. And I remember me and my brother, we would get in the kitchen. My grandmother would give us a blueprint of how to do the cornbread. Some of you may call it call it cake or I don't know how you would call it here, but 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 I'm from Alabama. I'm sorry. That's what we call it, cornbread. 
Sister Griffin, you understand that, right? It's cornbread. And so we will get into the kitchen and she'll give us our, her, her blueprint. And then my brother, we will get in there and we'll start the cooking and we'll go up the cornbread. And, and my grandmother was to, she was take, she would taste it after we were finished. And she would let us know who did better, right? She would let us know, hey, 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 boy, you cooked that bread. Hey, 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 son. You, you didn't do it so right, right? And so I remember this year, I mean, I, I've been winning for at least eight to 10 years by now. And, and just one year I got with my grandma and my brother, we cooked the cornbread and it came out and my grandmother came in and she tasted his cornbread. And she was like, man, this is the perfect cornbread. Oh boy, you did your thing. You put your foot in that cornbread. And so when she tastes mine, she did a little taste. She was like, something is missing. In your cornbread. I said, how is that, Grandma? Because I said, I followed your recipe. I followed everything you told me. I did everything you said. She said, you could have, she said, you couldn't do that. She said, no, that's not true. Because if, if you had to follow what I have given you, she said, then your cornbread would have been perfect, like your brother cornbread. And she said, so show me what you did. So I walked her down, I showed her the eggs, I gave her the cornmeal. Sister Griffin, I did everything she put before me. I gave it to her, and she was like, here, ah, I got you. She said, here's what's missing in your cornbread. I said, what is it? She said, you didn't put buttermilk in your cornbread. And she gave me, she said, here's the recipe. I laid it out. I told you what to do. And she said, you, you, you missed the buttermilk. You did not put the buttermilk in the cornbread. That's why your cornbread is not like your brother cornbread. And I said, you know what? You know what? I said, Grandma, you're right. I, I, I don't know how I missed the buttermilk. I said, but my cornbread is still good. And she said, no, it's not because you missed the buttermilk. It's not good because you missed the buttermilk. And I said, Grandma, but it's still good. Everybody eat my cornbread over my brother cornbread. She said, I don't care what you say and how you say it. She said, it's not good because you missed the buttermilk. And I thought about that thing. That thing came back and it was rolling back in my mind as I was studying the scripture for today. And the Lord said to me, yeah, you missing an ingredient in your cornbread. And that's the, and, and I said, God, you know what? You're right. They're just like the church today. Come on, say amen. The church got everything it needs. We got good preachers. We got good singing. We got good teachers. We got everything around us. We surrounded by everything that we need as a church. Come on, say amen. You can go to Atlanta, get the best worship. You can go to South Carolina, get the best preaching. You can come to North Carolina, get the, get the great praying, all of that good stuff. The church got everything it needs but love. That's the ingredient that is missing. Come on and say amen. And so when I was studying the text this week, God brought that thing to my mind. I said, God, I got it. Although my cornbread may look good, it may smell good, but yet at the same time, there's an ingredient that is missing in the cornbread. And I truly believe today the ingredient that is missing in the church is love. And that's what Paul is saying to his audience. You can have it all. You can do all you want to do. You got the gift of prophecy. You can teach. You can do this. You can do that. You can break down the scriptures. You can do all of, all of this stuff. But one thing that we're missing in the church of the living God is love. Because how do I know that? Well, let me tell you how do I know that. When people fall on their face and when people go through their valleys and when people are messing up and people are doing things that they know that they shouldn't do, guess what we do? We push them away. We make them run out of the church. We make them feel like there's an outsider, they're outcast, but we don't put our arms around them and we don't love them. Come on, say amen. I'm being honest today. The truth of the matter is, what will win people, y'all, it's not, it's, it's not how well I can sit here on this Zoom call or stand in the pulpit and exegete a text and I can preach. It's not my status in the community. It's not where I live. It's not what I got. But I learned something. People will come when you love them. Do I have a witness here? I remember. I remember this. Let me give you a story. I remember this uh, when I was pastoring in a certain place. I won't tell you the whole story, and I shared this with you before. I remember this girl was coming to my coming to my church, and we was doing a revival. 
and she would come in every day, y'all. She would cry. I, I noticed she cried day one, she cried day two, she cried day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven. And I finally had the nerve to go to her and ask her why she was crying. Right? And she finally told me, she said, my mom and my dad is a pastor. And these was Pentecostal. She said, they Pentecostal pastor. They, they, you know, she was telling me, my mom and dad is not sending their business, et cetera, et cetera, but they kicked me out of the house, et cetera, et cetera. She was giving me a whole spill, and I asked her why. She said, well, Pastor, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, um, they found out that I was going to the nightclub, and I was basically, she was a night girl, meaning that she was a stripper. Can I be honest? She was going to the strip club, and that's what she was doing to make extra money, and I'm listening to her. They kicked me out, and et cetera, et cetera. And I said to myself, "That's not like that's not how that should be." But, but, but at the same time, she was coming to my revival. She was crying. She was pouring out. And so I remember taking a lady within the church, and I asked her, "I said, hey, can you please, um, you know, deal with her, talk with her, help her through what she's going through, help her to get a job?" Because she had credentials in, in in the nursing field. She did. But she just was making more money to try to support her kids. And I never forget this, y'all. I never forget this. Right? This, this is sealed in my mind. I never forget what she was telling me. She was telling me all of this. And sure enough, the lady in the church helped her get a job, et cetera, et cetera. And so she came down the last night of the revival. She asked, I want to be baptized, Pastor. And I want to baptize her. And my, one of the elders, not, not my elders here, but one of my elders somewhere else, right, said to me, no, Pastor, you know what she's going through. You know what she's dealing with. We cannot do that. We cannot baptize her. Pastor, you know that she told us what she was going through and what she was doing. And I pondered that thing. I, I never forget it. I, I, I called my, I called a conference, consulted a conference. You should never turn away from Jesus. Somebody want to be baptized. They, they love Jesus. You bring him to Jesus. So that thing probably had wrestled with me. And my elders, they, 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 they got out of the way. They like left me alone. They, they, they gave it up like, Pastor, if you're going to do this, we have nothing to do with you. But I felt in my heart that I need to baptize this sister. I felt that in my heart. And truly, I, I promise you today, I baptized this sister. She got out of the nightclub. And she watched this. She got out of the nightclub. She got a good job, et cetera, et cetera. And to this very day, she's in the church. And she called me about two years ago. And she said to me, she said, Pastor, I never, I never been to a church that have shown so much love to me, even in my broken state. I never seen that before, Pastor. I never seen that before. She said, You show so much love to me. She's still in the church of the living God today. And I said to myself, God, sometimes we don't understand how you're moving. We cannot understand how you move, but what I do know is that sister blessed my soul because what she said to me was, Pastor, it was so much love that you have shown, you showed to me. You, you connected me with people and her career is just booming. And I just come and share that story with somebody today because we have to understand, we have to learn how to love people where they are. And that's what Paul is saying today. Paul is saying, you can have it all. Go ahead, preach. Go ahead, go ahead and, 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 and speak in tongues. Do all of that. That's what Paul, go ahead. But if there is no love, Paul said it means nothing. And, 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 and here's what I do know. Here's what I do know. People know if you love them or not. Come on, say amen. They know that. So look, keep your Christianity on. Keep, keep, put, put your garment on and you can keep walking as if you're the perfect person in the world. You can, you can do all of this, what you want, all of that. But people don't care about that. That's what I'm on. What people care is, do you love me, man? When I fall flat on my face, when you find me out in, in the deep of the sea, can you love me back in? That's why the Bible says, God said by this, Shall all men know that, that you are my disciple if you got love one for another? Jesus said, Love your Lord that God with all what? Your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength. 
He said, give me some love. And the truth of the matter is, we are living in a time. We're living in a time, church. Listen to me. We are living in a time. People are not so much concerned about our theology. <laughs> Listen to what I'm telling you. People want to know, do you love me? Do your action tell me that? Do you love me? And so I, I, I come to tell you today the missing ingredients in the church of the living God. We got it all together. We got the Sabbath. We got the eating. We got it all down pat, don't we? We got everything we need. But that ingredient that is missing, when Jesus will taste the church, when he will say there's no love. And that's what is missing today. Church, we got to learn how to love each other. We got to stop beating each other up. For an example, for an example, my brother, I, I can only use my brother as an example. And, and my elders know what's going on in my brother, in my family, right? That's why I wasn't with you last Saturday. Guess what I did? I got up, I got on the road, I went down, I seen him. He's a state trooper. Something happened in his life. I won't give the details, but my elders know what was going on with him, right? And I know what he did, but I showed up. And you know what he did? He embraced me. He put his arms around me. Man, he would drive all the way down here just to show that type of support. You know why? Because I've learned love conquers all. And he will never forget that. And I want you to know today, Ephesus, that God want us as a people to learn how to love. That's it. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so, so loved us that he gave everything. And so I'm learning something. And this is just only me talking. Y'all got to let me just have my free speech today. And I got to tell you the truth. I'm learning, man. Okay, yep, I'm in the church. I know the right way. I know how to eat. I know how to do it. I know how to do all of this. But I've learned only love will save people. When people know that you love them, they will come. They will listen in spite of what they're doing. Here's what Paul says. He said, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angel and have not love, he said, I become a sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mystery and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains, but if I have not love, also nothing. That makes sense. That really makes sense. When you are down and when you are out, when you find yourself in the valley, when you find yourself going through stuff, you don't want no one to come and tell you about the Sabbath. You don't want no one to come and tell you about eating right. You want people to love you where you are. You want to feel love. And I'm learning, even with Paul, when, when God saved Paul, I get it now. I see it, God. I can have it all. God want us as a people to learn how to love. That's the missing ingredients today in the church of a living God. Even in this platform, we love to beat people down. We love to talk about people. We love to put their business out there. No, God ain't asking us to do that. What God is asking us to do, to love each other. To love. And I've learned that. That's why, brothers and sisters, I have learned. I'm not going to beat a person up when they fall. I'm not going to judge a person when they fall. I'm not going to talk about a person when they fall. 
My prayer is God restore that person. Give them the strength they need. Walk them through what they're going through. Because I've learned love conquers all. The missing ingredients today in the church of the living God is love. Will you agree with me today? We got everything we need. We got the best preachers, the best praise team, the best choir. We know how to cook up some K, K loaves and how you, how you said whatever, do some veggie loaf, whatever. We, we, knew, we know how to do it all. But when they come to loving people, ah, that's the tough part with us. And God is telling us we got to love people on the mountaintop. We got to love them in the valley as well, even when they mess up. We got to learn how to love. That's the missing ingredient. Church, listen. I know we're in a tough time. We all, we we are. And sometimes things are not good. Things, you know, I, I get it. And sometimes you, and, and, and if you will be honest with me right now, some of you can just rub your head like I'm rubbing. Like sometimes you just want to throw the towel in. Sometimes I can't deal with this person. And if you married like I am with three kids, oh God, help me, help me God, right? If you married like I am with three kids, the truth of the matter is, come on now. I got any married folks out there that understand what I'm saying. Like, let's be honest. It's, it's just not as easy as you see. But I've learned in spite of the circumstances, in spite of the hardship, I've learned I gotta love. I got to love regardless because love conquers all. And I remember my wife said this to me, y'all. She was like, man, I know that I've been giving you a hard time. And I know I've been telling you to do this and do that. And I know you got to deal with the church and you're trying to do this and do that. And boom, boom, she telling me all of this. And, and she came back and she was like, but you know what, Darren? She said, but you love me through it all. I said, and I had to tear her, y'all. I'm being honest today. I said, it wasn't easy for me to love you through it all. But I did. Come on, say it bad, right? It was not easy, but I did. And I've learned. I've learned, guys. Love. Conquers all. And God is showing me. God is showing me. I sent my son out of love to save you. I sent him to save you. Not only did he send him to save me, but he sent him to save you as well. And God wants us to know we must learn how to love each other, even when we get on each other's nerves. Come on, say amen. I hope I'm blessing somebody today. I hope I am. I hope I am, right? Even when we get on each other's nerves, we have to learn how to love, love through it. It may not be easy. It may be tough and tight, but you got to learn how to love. That's the missing ingredients I've learned that we're missing from the church of the living God is love. So guess what? Will we have disagreement? Oh, yes, we will. We may not like each other. Oh, yes, that may happen. You may step on my toes, Dr. Ray. Uh, may not like it. But I have to learn, regardless, how to love. Because that's what Jesus did. They stepped on him, they beat him, didn't they? They hung him high, stretched him wide. He hung his head, yep, he died. But that was love. <laughs> that was love, y'all. That was love. That was love. So I want to encourage somebody today. You got to keep on loving. You cannot stop loving when things get tough. Things get tight. Because God has called us to love. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you got what? Love. One for another. At this time, Brother Borkin, unmute yourself and give us a closing song. Pastor, that was a great word. Great word. This is what I got out of it. 
falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus. It was the best thing I'd ever I know somebody out there agree with me when I say that. Falling in love Jesus. Falling in love Jesus. Falling in love Jesus. Best thing I've ever, ever done. It is all I feel protected. It is all I feel rejected. It is all I Protected, there's no other place that I'd rather, rather be. Oh, there's no place that I, I'd rather be, rather be. Falling in love, falling in love, falling in love with Jesus. Thank you so much, Brother Borkin. I just want to encourage the church. Let's love on each other. Instead of beating each other up, come on, say amen. What we need today is love. Can I, can I get a witness there by raising your hand? Just say, Pastor, that's what we need. We need love. That's it. That's just the truth. Because I don't know what you're going through. You don't know what no one is going through. We got to learn how to love each other where we are. Now, if, 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 if you really want to love, and you really believe in loving each other, I should see you at prayer meeting on Wednesday night. Come on, say amen. Right? No, 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 don't change on me now. Come on, say amen, right? Don't change on me now, right? I should see you at prayer meeting on Wednesday night when we come together. Um, and, and, and let's just be honest. Our prayer meeting is very, um, we have like, Condensed our prayer meeting. Prayer meeting only lasts at least what 30 minutes, if I'm right about that. Right? At least 30 minutes, right? So, church, come on. I, I, I truly believe we can come on prayer meeting, right? If you don't have your schedule filled up, and, like you don't even have to say anything. All you gotta do is just click it on. And like I told you, let me let me show you again. This is all you got. Nobody, you know, you don't have to say a word. We ain't got to hear from you. We ain't got to hear a word. If you don't want to testify, if you don't want to say anything, right? But I truly believe that we need to come to pray as a church. It's time for prayer, y'all. Y'all know we in a time that we never seen. Like we, we got to come together as a body. I'm pleading. I'm pleading with you. Let's do prayer meeting together. Like, I, I mean, let's do it together. I mean, only 30 minutes, we, we have a good time, and we're we not even sermonizing you for prayer meeting. If I'm right about that, Elder Brian, all we do is just read a, we just read a scripture to give you an encouragement. We pray, we have a couple of songs, and, and we go on about our business. So I'm, I'm, I'm pleading. I truly believe that we need to come together and pray as a church. Your testimonies, I'll be hearing testimonies that have, have encouraged me. And I truly believe this is what God wants. So church, remember, the missing ingredients that, we, that we're that we missing in our own lives is love. Learn how to love people where they are and through their situation. And I guarantee it will bear dividends. I know that for a fact. Right? Love. Love, 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 love. That's what conquer, love conquers all. 
God has shown us, he gave us his son. And I truly believe because he has given us his son, as an example, we have to learn how to love people like Jesus loved us. If that's fair, everyone, have you been blessed today? Come on, just put your hand up. You've been blessed with the word today. I praise God for that. What I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask at this time, um, Elder Brian, if you unmute yourself and give us our benediction um, for today. And remember, church, tomorrow at 10 a.m., I promise you, we will not be two, three hours. I know that for a fact. Spread the word. Let members know that we have a, a business meeting on tomorrow at 10 a.m. I'm looking forward to seeing you at 10 a.m. in the morning. Elder Brian, give us our benediction. Let us pray, our Heavenly Father, we thank thee that you bless us to assemble here today. And as we leave this space, come Holy Spirit, dwell with us. Help us to pause and look at the love of God. And then help us to exemplify in our life, day by day. In the blessed name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Elder. All right, everyone. By the grace of God, I, I'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. May God bless you. And remember, love, love, and love. That's God's desire for us. God bless all.